Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Luke's Anglican Church in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, on this, the 31st of May, the Feast of Pentecost. We are gathering again in our church building after a couple of months of being recording services from home, and today I'm gathering with five people from our congregation to celebrate Holy Eucharist and to record it for you at home. There is something called a spiritual uh, Eucharist in which you connect with us and in your heart, you, you connect with the story of Jesus, you, you confess your sins, you believe in his power to, uh, to reconcile those sins and to bring you closer to God, and you will receive communion in your heart uh, through that belief and faith with us today, even though you cannot receive the bread and wine. And we long for the day when you can join us in person uh, with now 10 people being allowed to come together, we will be inviting people to come to the church um, to record services up to 10. We can't have more people than that. But over time, we will develop a plan to allow different people to come and participate with us until we can all come together. Our service today is found from the Book of Alternative Services on page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen let us pray god of wind and flame send your life-giving spirit upon your people give fire to our words strength to our witness, and boldness to our proclamation of your wondrous work in Christ, who with you and the Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. from heaven. Okay. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all the, these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the <clears throat> parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, 
saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 104 which is found on page 844 of the Book of Alternate Services. We will commence with verse 25 through 37, omitting verse 36, and together the prayer at the end. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made in sport of. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You sent forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. O God of eternal light, heaven and earth are the work of your hands, and all creation sings your praise and beauty. As in the beginning, by your Spirit, you gave life and order to all that is. So by the same Spirit, redeem us and all things, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians. No one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but there is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. And to another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. And to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. And to another, various kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many, are one body 
And so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were made to drink of the one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May these words glorify God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the last few weeks, few months, we've been experiencing social distancing, then became physical distancing, each of us restricting our activities so that we could produce a safer community, especially for the most vulnerable among us. Part of that was, quote unquote, closing our church, but it was just the building. Today, on this Feast of Pentecost, we celebrate the act of the Holy Spirit working in and through the apostles who were able to witness to Christ because they were able to overcome a barrier, a significant barrier, a barrier of language. And they were empowered by, given, by being given the speech they needed, the language they needed in order to deliver that witness to a variety of people from different parts of the world, different ways of life. And it was so compelling that some came and believed and others thought that they might be drunk. But that's just it. It's beyond comprehension. It's a little bit crazy. It's hard to believe that that could have happened. But sometimes it's hard to believe the good news in Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's hard to believe that God even cares about us, that God forgot about us, and I'm sure for people living in that particular era, feeling oppressed by Roman rule, they probably felt much like their forefathers felt when they were living in Babylon in exile. Although they got to live in their homeland, they still did not get the freedom that they should be enjoying. They still did not have their rulers ruling over them justly. And so they begin to wonder, they begin to question. But the disciples were able to witness. They were empowered by the Spirit to go out and do bold new things, brave new things, courageous new things for the sake of that witness. Our church has not been closed since mid-March. Our office has been shut up. Services have still happened, but not from this building. And although we are delighted to be back in this place, for a few of us anyway, we are more delighted to report that the Spirit has done her work in and through the people of St. Luke's. Ministry did not stop. Ministry was renewed and refreshed through the Holy Spirit. People were using their various gifts and talents in bold new ways. Now, many of our ministries did stop. Many of our church groups didn't gather. Many of our normal liturgies did not happen that we would have enjoyed. We had to stop our outreach for the food bank and filling up our lighthouse. We had to stop meeting as Mother's Union or as ACW or as Time Out for Women. None of those things were happening, but lots of other things were. 
I was joined with people for services who hadn't preached before and who had dared to offer a reflection or a sermon and did a wonderful job. Others were able to do new things as well by going out into the community, by delivering special gifts. I was delighted on several occasions to have little things dropped off on our doorstep, a little devotional booklet for Easter, a little treat for the kids, some food that was healthy and nutritious that was able to give two working parents a break that night from having to cook another meal and ignoring our kids for half an hour while we tried to maintain the pots on the stove. An extra special time just to pay attention to them and to honor our kids in the midst of a busy workday, two adults trying to work from home. We had people who were organizing phone trees and would continue to call back and touch, touch base with parishioners who might not be able to read our e-newsletters or access our services online. In fact, in many ways, people stepped up to do new things and made the church alive again, a sort of resurrection of what was most important in our church, the witness of the good news that people would feel cared about by God, by the church, by their neighbor. And so I give thanks in this Pentecost for all of those people in our church family who received a sense of call from the Holy Spirit. Perhaps a new sense of ministry will develop out of this, who offered up their gifts and talents for the benefit of the whole. Some people started working at the food bank for the first time. Others were making collections in new ways, including our meatballs. Our meatball organizer went and collected from folks who couldn't drop off their meatballs at the church, but Margaret's house still received our contribution. People were using the internet to go out and get donations for various causes that were in need. People were using our access to, to a community in order to promote their various events and fundraisers. We were doing a lot. The church was not closed. The spirit was at work. And hopefully we will continue to work into that, to lean into the discomfort and learn how to embrace these new gifts and talents, even though they may not be what we've been used to. In fact, I'm going to suggest that maybe that's the gift of this COVID-19 time, that we've all had to learn and grow and that we are all now going to be challenged not to go back to our usual ways. Let us look with fresh eyes at this opportunity and see it as a gift. Let us see what is going on in our community and feel the movement of the Spirit. Let us find those various talents and gifts that we have hidden under a bushel and allow them to be a benefit to our world. Thanks be to God for the gift of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, still moving, still disturbing us, still growing and challenging and making us uncomfortable so that we can make others comfortable. Amen. On page 188, I invite you to join in the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped the Lord. He has spoken to us. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 116, number seven. Let us pray in faith to God our Father, to his Son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. Lord, Lord hear, hear and have, have mercy. mercy. For the church of the living God throughout the world, let us ask the riches of his grace. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who proclaim the word of truth, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear and have, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the Prime Minister of this country, Justin Trudeau, and for all who govern the nations, that they may strive for justice and peace, let us ask the strength of God. Lord, Lord hear, hear and have mercy. For scholars, and research workers, that their studies may benefit humanity. Let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, let us ask the peace of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. On this day of Pentecost, we give thanks for all those who have offered their gifts and talents for the betterment of our community. We especially give thanks for all those who worked throughout this pandemic to keep our community well. We give thanks for all those who sustained ministry in this parish through prayers, phone calls, liturgical leadership, and checking in on their neighbors. We especially give thanks for all those who are moved by the Spirit to step boldly into the unknown and take on new challenges for the sake of the gospel. We pray for the work of our diocesan church family as we discern our future leadership needs and ministry opportunities. We especially pray for Catherine Boubinier, Carl Fraser, Sandra Fife, and Elliot Seitman, who have offered themselves for consideration for the position of Bishop. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we have been asked to pray for the ministry of St. James Armdale, St. Margaret of Scotland, Halifax, and St. George's Church, Halifax. We also pray for our prayer partners, St. George's Church, New Glasgow, and St. Andrew's, Locks Road. Our prayers are also bid for Bob, Brian, Dawn, Fred, 
Jason, Judith, Karen, Lisa, Marilyn, Owen, Vi, Vivian, Sue, Jen, Helen, David, JD, Phil, Bobby, Jean, Pat, Anna, George, Jerry, and Kathy. And for all those we name now, both aloud and in the silence of our hearts. Amen. Dear friends, Dear friends in Christ, God, is God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Eucharistic prayer today will be number three, found on page 198 with the proper preface for Pentecost. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of your promise, you pour forth your spirit upon us, filling us with gifts and leading us into all truth. You give us power to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, 
out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, we died with you on the cross, we were raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, so that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you all for joining us for this service this morning. I wish you all a very happy and blessed Feast of Pentecost. Know that we still want to collect your prayer requests in the comment section of this video. Please leave a comment that says pray for or give thanks for. And if it's for a particular person, please just use their first name only. We will monitor those comments until Friday of that week for use in next Sunday's service. We wish you all well, and hopefully there will be more announcements soon about gathering in community. But until then, please stay safe and know that we love you and care for you.